السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وقدوة للعاملين ومحجة للسالكين وحجة على العباد أجمعين بعثه الله بالإيمان ناديا وإلى دار السلام داعية أما بعد أيها الأحبة We are continuing with our lecture series regarding the history of the Muslims in Muslim Spain and Portugal, the history of Andalus, a history that spans from the year 92 of the Hijri calendar to the year 897 of the Hijri calendar, a history of 805 years plus. This is our lecture for tonight and the forthcoming nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit all of us in it. We mentioned last night that after Musa ibn Nusayr, rahimahullah, he made sure there was stability in North Africa. He conquered all of North Africa. It was firmly under the hands of the Muslims. And the policy of the Muslims from the day Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came is to make sure Islam and this Tawheed reaches every single land from the lands in this world. And the, the land that was next to Morocco or North Africa was the land of Spain and Portugal. So how do we make sure that this da'wah al-Islamiyya reaches the lands of Morocco? This was the challenge that was presented to the leader of the Muslims, Musa ibn Nusayr. If you have read anything about the history of the Muslims conquering Persia, there's an episode where the great general of the Persians, Rustum, he asks the Muslim ambassador, Rib'i ibn Amir, he says, why have you guys come to our lands? What purpose did you bring? Did you come here? He says, Rabbi ibn Amr, with all the izzah, the glory of Islam, he says, Atayna li nukhrij al-ibad min ibadat al-ibad ila ibadat rabb al-ibad. We came here to remove the people from worshipping other people to worship Allah, the Lord of all the people. Li nukhrijahum min dhiq al-dunya ila sa'at al-dunya wal-akhirah. And we remove them from the narrowness of this world to the whiteness of this world and the year after. This is the purpose. Islam To remove people from the oppression of many worship, acts of worship of other faiths to the worship of one God, a just God, the deen of Islam. So the Muslims always want to spread this nur to remove the people from dhulumat. And sometimes you need power and strength for you to spread this message. So Musa ibn Nusayr, he looks at the land that is next to Morocco. This is the land of Andalusia. Why is it called Andalusia? There was a tribe of people from Germany. They conquered this area of the world. These people are known as Vandals. They destroyed the Roman Empire in the year 455 of the Christian calendar. They destroyed Rome completely. And they occupied this area of the world, Vandals, Vandalusia. This came later on to be pronounced as Andalusia. So how do we conquer this land of Spain and Portugal and bring it to the Islamic empire? This is the challenge that's presented by Mus to Musa ibn Nusayr. The first thing he looks at, he says, we are in North Africa, these people are in Europe. Between us is the White Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. There's at least 13 kilometers for us to cross from Morocco to enter Spain. That's challenge number one. For us to cross, we need boats, we need ships. Ship or ships? Is ship a plural or a single? We need boats and we need, a, we need some ships. So that's challenge number two. So what do we do? So he says, challenge number three, this land of uh, Andalus, we don't know it. Muslims have never stepped on this land ever. This is the first time we're going to experience this land. And also we have some other minor challenges. There's the Balearic Islands that you have to pass and this is owned by the Roman Empire. There is Sabta, the port of Sabta that is North Africa. This is owned by Julian, one of the Christian leaders. How do we pass these challenges so that we can make sure that this Islam reaches the land of Morocco, of uh, Spain and Portugal? This is the challenge that is presented to the leader of the Muslims who was based in Tunisia at the time, Musa ibn Nusayr, rahimahullah. Alhamdulillah, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you plan, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings for you whatever, even more than you expect. His general, uh, Tariq ibn Ziyad, was in a port city of Tangier. So he's sitting in Tangier, then he hears that an ambassador from Julian, the leader of Sabta, the Christian leader, has come to visit him. What does this Christian want? Okay, welcome him. The Christian says, my leader Julian offers you the following offer. 
Number one, he's going to hand over to you the port city of Sabta. That is in Morocco. For you to conquer Andalus, you need this port city. He's going to hand it over to you. He's going to surrender it fully to your rulership. Number two, you need ship. He's going to give you all the boats and the ships that you require for you to enter Spain. And number three, <coughs> he's going to explain to you the entire geography, the history, the general knowledge or the knowledge required for you to sufficiently conquer this land of Andalus. Subhanallah. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُو Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to you something when you have not even expected. So this news makes Tariq ibn Ziyad very happy. So he says, let me consult with my leader. He is in Qairawan in Tunisia. I give him this good news that you have brought to me. So he goes to see Musa ibn Nusayr. Musa ibn Nusayr is even happier. This is what I was wanting. This is what I need to conquer Spain and Portugal to make sure that this da'wah of Tawheed reaches this land of Muslims, of Portugal and Spain. But he says, let me not rush. Let me consult the ultimate leader, our leader in Damascus, the Khalif of the Muslims, Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik. So he writes a letter to Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik. He says, we have been presented with this opportunity by this Christian Julian. He's going to surrender to us, Sabta. He's going to give us boats. He's going to make us understand the land of Andalus because he's from there. He was expelled by the previous, by the new king, Rodrigo. So he's going to explain to us everything we require about this land. Al-Walid ibn al-Malik, he says, Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik, he says to him, okay, you can go and conquer this land of Andalus and bring it to Amlak al-Islamiyah. However, number one, the most important thing that we do as Muslims is we do not rush. You have to spend, send special forces or a reconnaissance mission or a spy mission of few soldiers of the Muslims for them to study the land and to confirm that the, this news that this Christian man Julian is giving you is actually authentic. Do not just enter in bin fatabayanu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if someone brings for you news, just don't enter and you apply those news and you follow it and you believe it wholeheartedly. No, you have to find other ways of confirming the truthfulness or the falsehood of that news. So he says you have to send a a small sariya, a small battalion of Muslims to reconnaissance or to spy and to get information from the land of Spain and Portugal. So Musa ibn Nusayr, rahimahullah, the governor of North Africa, he says, Taib, I'll do that. He chooses an army of 500 people and he puts a man called Tarif ibn Malik. You Tarif ibn Malik, you have to cross secretly in the year 91 of the Hijri calendar, the month of Ramadan. We want you to cross secretly into Spain, study the area for eight months, ten months, then come back and give us sufficient information that we require to conquer this land, to spread Islam in this land. Us is not property. We are not conquering this land for wealth or for, for dunya or for material needs. We want to give these people a chance to enter Jannah. We want to make them our brothers. We want to bring this nur of Tawheed to these lands. So Tarif ibn Malik is given this expedition. He crosses from Morocco, the 13 kilometers he crosses into Spain. He lands on an island that's always forever known as the island of Tarif. Till to this day, it's known as the island of Tarif. So he studies the geography and the people there. Meantime, as he's studying there, Musa ibn Nusayr is preparing the Muslims for this great expedition to conquer the first lands in Europe, to conquer the land of Spain and Portugal. Also, he had a different agenda, Musa ibn Nusayr, rahimahullah. The Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, had mentioned in a hadith that the Muslims, all of them in history, were very much aware. The Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, he said to the Muslims, La taftahunna Constantinia, fala ni'mal amir amiruha, wala ni'mal jaysh dalik al jaysh. O Muslims, you shall conquer the city of Constantinople. You shall conquer the city of Istanbul. A blessed army is the army that conquers that city. And a blessed leader is the leader that conquers that city. So this hadith was very popular amongst the Muslims. Even if it has some issues with its narration, with its chain of narration, all the Muslims, the Mujahideen, the Sahaba, they knew this hadith. Amongst them, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, Yazid al muawiyah so many Muslims tried conquering the city from the east, but they're not successful. So Musa ibn Nusayr, rahimahullah, he says, the Muslims are not successful to conquer it from the side of Asia. Let us try conquering the longer side from Europe. I want to conquer Spain, Portugal, then I conquer France, then Germany. I go around, I go Hungary, all the way until I reach the land of Constantinople from the west, so that I get that bishara, that glad tidings that the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, had mentioned. 
So he sends the army of Tarif ibn Malik to, to investigate this land. Meantime, he is forming a very large army. How large is the army that he forms? We'll see that. When Tarif ibn Malik comes back in the year 92 of the Hijri calendar, Musa ibn Nusayr is ready for the news. He's given the news. He's told this place is ready. The, Rodrigo is the leader of uh, Spain, but they're not quite together because he killed the former king. He's, he is very oppressive. He charges people too many taxes. He oppresses them. He enslaves them. There is a class culture in Europe. People are illiterate. They don't know about Tahara. They don't take showers for years. They eat Najasa. They burn the children, the women, the wives of the man who died. They, so much Munkarat and darkness in this area of the world that in the history it's known as the Dark Ages. So he says, come and save this land and bring Tawheed to it. He says, Alhamdulillah. So he says, Tariq ibn Ziyad, you young boy from the tribe of the Barbar, the Amazigh tribe, you shall be given this honorable mission of bringing Islam to be the very first person to land in Europe to bring Islam to the lands of Spain and Portugal. This is the task that we're giving you, Tariq ibn Ziyad. And we're giving you a great army of 7,000 soldiers. 7,000 soldiers were given this great task of conquering Spain and Portugal. So he's given boats by Julian and he lands on a place, the Straits of Gibraltar, Jabal Tariq, forever known as Jabal Tariq. The English have changed it to Gibraltar. So he crosses to Gibraltar and he crosses into, into Europe, into Spain. When he lands there, a small battle occurs between him and the army of the, the southern army in Spain. And this person is shocked. Who are these people and where have they have come from? He writes an emergency letter to his leader in Toledo, in Toledo, the capital city of Spain. He says, Rodrigo, come and assist us. People have come to us to attack us. We do not know where they're from. Are they from the heavens? Are they from the earth? These are not people we understand. At night, they're like monks. They perform Qiyamul Layl. During the day, they are Shidda. They are so brave. Even if they're few in number, very brave. We do not know these people. Are they from the heavens or are they from this earth? We do not understand. Come and assist us, Lodrig. So the Muslims defeated this small battalion of the southern army of, of Spain. And they enter Spain. Then Tariq ibn Ziyad hears the frightening news that Rodrigo has prepared a great army to meet this army. He's prepared an army of 100,000 soldiers from the soldiers of Spain and Portugal to finish off this Muslim army. 100,000 versus 7,000. This mathematics does not, it does not make sense. So he says, ah, this is not easy for us. Let me write a letter to my immediate boss in uh, Qairawan in Tunisia, asking for more assistance. So he sends a letter to Musa ibn Usair. He says, Musa ibn Usair, al-madad, al-madad, give us assistance. How much assistance did he give? Musa ibn Usair, he sends to him an army of 5,000 soldiers, only 5,000. So the Muslim army is 12,000 in number versus the, Portug the Portuguese and the Spaniards, 100,000 on one side. The Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith that this ummah shall not be defeated if the army is 12,000 because of numbers. An army of 12,000 will never be defeated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ How many of a small army have defeated much larger armies because of the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That night, Tariq ibn Ziyad, he sees, he sleeps, and he sees in the dream the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he sees the muhajireen, and he sees the ansar. All of them, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, is ahead of him, and the muhajireen, and the ansar, they're the ones entering in the dream, they're entering Spain and Portugal, even before him. And he gets so happy with this news, he takes this as glad tidings, that they are surely going to be victorious. So he's hearing an army of 100,000 is coming. His army is only 12,000. How do I prepare for this battle? I have to choose. The art of war says you have to choose the place of battle. It's one of the instruments or one of the, the keys of victory. So he chooses a place called the Valley of Birbat or the Valley of Lukka. This valley is actually very unique. On the left, there's a lake. On the right, there's a mountain. Behind him is a mountain. 
So the mountain is on two sides and left. So only in front of him is the army that will come of the army of the Spaniards, 100, 1,000 of them. Behind him, he keeps a small, a small battalion to guard the behind side so that they're not outflanked from behind and surrounded from all sides. So this is the place he chose, Wadi Birbat, and the great battle of Qadi on the 28th of Ramadan, the year 92 of the Hijr calendar. One of the greatest battles in Islamic history, although it has not been given its correct or its truthful right, it is equal or closer to the great battles of Qadisiyah. The battle of Qadisiyah where Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas was participant, or the great battle of Yarmouk where Khalid ibn Walid, Abu Ubaida, and Sa'ad, others from the Sahaba were participating. This is one of the great battles in Islamic history, the, wa- the battle of Wadi Birbat, the year 92 of the Hijri calendar, the 28th of Ramadan. When it comes to the month of Ramadan, Muslims in our time, they waste a lot of time in Ramadan. You find some of them, it's the month of catching up on series or movies or other things to kill time, as they say. But Muslims of those days, Ramadan was Shahrul Futuhat, was the month of victory. For this is the month that we were victorious in the great battle of Badr, the 17th of Ramadan, the year 2. This is when we conquered Mecca, the 20th of Ramadan. This is the month we had the battle of Ainu Jalut, where we defeated the Mongolians in Palestine. One of the greatest victories, not only in Islamic history, but in world history. This is a Shahr of Futuhat. So the Muslims met this army on the 28th of Ramadan, the year 92 of the Hijri calendar in the land of Spain, Wadi Birbat. So 100,000 versus 12,000. And they fight Khani Fillah. And how long was this fight? Was it two hours, five hours? Who do you feel pity and sympathy for? The Muslims with a small number of 12,000 or this army of 100,000? So the battle of Khani Fillah started on 28th and continued for eight consecutive days. 28th of Ramadan, they were fighting. The 29th of Ramadan, they were fighting. The next day was the day of Eid, the first of Shawwal. They were still fighting for 10, 12 hours a day. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. On the sixth of Shawwal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the Muslims. And Rodrigo, the leader of the Spaniards, he was defeated. And he was either killed or he ran away and he's forgotten in history forever. This is the great victory that the Muslims experienced in the valley of Birbat on, that occurred from the 28th of Ramadan, the year 92 of the Hijri calendar, to the 6th of Shawwal. 3,000 Muslims, Yukhanifillah, pure blood. They lost their lives to conquer this land, to bring Tawheed to this land of Muslim Spain and Portugal. Thereafter, Tariq ibn Ziyad, Rahimahullah, this news especially, it made the Europeans astounded, they were so shocked. How does an army of 12,000 defeat a great army of 100,000? And from the fictional stories that you might have heard, is that they started making up excuses. They said, you know, these Muslims, they had no choice except to fight like that. Why? Because when Tariq ibn Ziyad landed on, uh, in Spain, he made sure that all the boats were burnt. And he told the Muslims, oh Muslim army, before you are the Spaniards, behind you there is their Mediterranean Sea. I have burnt all the boats. There's no boats or ship for you guys to run away. This is the European version of the events. That the Muslims are so cowardly, they need such a way of motivation. They have their boats to be burnt, but that's not the motivation. Our motivation is the Quran of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our motivation is the Sunnah of the Prophet. Our motivation is to bring the light of Tawheed to you people of Europe. That is our only motivation. We did not come here because of dunya. We came here for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this news is fake news. The Muslims did not burn any boats. And why will they burn these boats? And it was not their property. This was the property of Julian, the Christian leader of Sabta. It was not the property of the Muslims. So they didn't, this did not happen. So the Muslims were victorious in Wadi Birbat. And thereafter, Tariq ibn Ziyad, he says, let me go to the next city. And you shall notice the names of this city if you watch football, the La Liga, all these cities, all the football teams in the La Liga, all these were cities of Muslims. So the Muslims, the first city they conquer is the city of Sevilla. You've heard of Sevilla, Ishbilia. You've all heard of it. So they conquer this city of Sevilla, Ishbilia. This is a city that's heavily fortified. They come to the city and they tell the people of the city, you have three conditions. We Muslims give you only three conditions. Accept Islam. You are our brothers. You are our sisters. No harm will befall you. 
Option number two, if you don't want to accept Islam like Rahaf al-Din, you remain upon your Christianity. But every man that is of fighting age has to pay one dinar tax as jizya every year. Hatta yu'tul jizyata an yadin wa hum saagirun. If you don't accept this second condition, then we have to fight. So the people of Ishbilia, they looked at the oppression of Rodrigo, and they looked at this army of Muslims. These people, are they from the heavens? Where are they from? Are they shayateen? Who are these angels or shayateen? We don't understand them. So he said, ah, let us open our gates to these Muslims. And they surrendered, and they welcomed the Muslims to the land of, Shibilia, of Sevilla, of Ishbilia. Tarq al he looks at the state of Spain, and he says, this land is very easy to conquer for now. If we wait longer, it might not be as easy as now. The morale of these people is completely broken. Let me continue conquering. So he says to the Muslims, I divide you into three, four groups. One group, 500, 700 soldiers go to Cordoba, Cordoba, one of the greatest cities in Islamic history, conquer Cordoba. Another army go conquer Murcia. Another go conquer Granada. So the Muslim three armies, they go set out 700 soldiers of Qanifillah. If you know Qurtuba, this Qurtuba became one of the greatest Islamic cities equal to Baghdad. Baghdad is the capital of the Islamic state in the, in the, in the east. Qurtuba is the capital of Andalus later on. It was only conquered by 700 Muslims. Granada, the last area that Muslims owned in Spain, were conquered only by 700 people. Murcia, 700 soldiers. So the Muslims thereafter, they set out and they conquer the city of Jayyan. Tariq Miziad was probably told by Musa ibn Nusayr, do not pass Jayyan. I, as Musa ibn Nusayr, I have experience in North Africa. I was mentioned yesterday, Uqba ibn Nafi'a, when he conquered North Africa, he was conquering very quickly. But there was no stability. Every time he conquers, they lose lands and they attack from behind. So you Muslims do not conquer Spain very quickly, you might be surrounded again once you continue with this victory. But Tariq bin Ziyad, he looks at the state of uh, Spain and he sees that things are very easy. So after conquering Jayyan, he goes to the middle of Spain and conquers the greatest city at the time, the capital city of Spain, Toledo, the city of Toledo, which is in Arabic, Tulaytila. He conquers this city that is completely fortified. Mountains and mountains and mountains and a fortress in front of it. It is not easy to conquer this city. He conquers it and they open the doors to him and he becomes the leader of the Muslims in Tulaytila. When Musa ibn Nusayr had this news, he was not impressed. And he sent an emergency letter to, to Tariq ibn Ziyad. Stay where you are. I am not happy with what you have done. Some people might think that this is jealousy. But this is not jealousy or anything of that sort. Musa ibn Nusayr, everything that Tariq ibn Ziyad does goes back to his hasanat. Because he's the teacher of Tariq ibn Ziyad. He is the immediate boss. He is the one who's given him this idea or this military strategy of conquering Spain. So Musa ibn Nusayr, he comes from North Africa. He brings also more, more army. The Muslim army, as we said, was 12,000, but 3,000 lost their lives. How many left? No? 9,000 are left. So Musa ibn Nusayr, he lands on Spain to also assist the Muslims. When he lands on Spain, he discovered his fear was indeed true. The Muslims of Sevilla, the Christians of Sevilla, Ishbilia, they broke their treaty. And this is something they will always do in this history series. We're talking about every single history. إِنَّهُمْ لَا أَعْدَى لَهُمْ La aymana lahum. They never keep their word. They will never keep any treaty that they sign with the Muslims. They will always betray and always break it. Take this as a as a qaida or a rule. Always they will break. So he finds that the, Mus the Christians in Ishbilia have broken the treaty. And they have killed the Muslims who are guarding the city. And they have closed the doors and declared war on the Muslims. So he says, ha. He has come with an army of 18,000. 18,000 with Musa ibn Nusayr. 9,000 with Tariq ibn Ziyad. A total army of 27. 27,000. He besieges this city for months and months and months until they surrender and they agree to go back to the original terms and they pay jizya. Thereafter, he decides to go to go east, to go 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 east, westwards. So he sends his son, Abdul Aziz ibn Musa ibn Nusayr, to conquer the land towards the west. So Abdul Aziz ibn Musa ibn Nusayr conquers the land of Narda. 
Then he goes as far as Lisbon and he conquers the entire of Portugal within one year. By the year 93 or 94 of the Hijri calendar, the entire of Portugal was conquered by the Muslims. Thereafter, he comes, Musa ibn Nusayr, he meets Tariq ibn Ziyad in uh, Tulaytila, and he tells him, you've done wrong. You have kept the Muslims under a great threat by rushing towards conquering all the cities. But I have forgiven you. Let us continue with this, with this expedition. So, in about three years, and three or three and a half years, the Muslims, alhamdulillah, they were able to conquer the entire of Spain the entire of Portugal and even some small Muslim army managed to cross the Pyrenees mountains and they entered the south of, of, of France in a place known as the French Riviera. All these lands were lands of Tawheed. All these lands were lands of La ilaha illallah, lands of five prayers every day. These lands became the lands of Islam after for many years they were lands of darkness. In the year 94 or 95 of the Hijr calendar, Qani Fillah, as Musa ibn Nusayr and Tariq ibn Ziyad are trying to conquer one small area of Spain that's left, Mantiqa to Sakhria, this area is known as the Asturia region of Spain. This Asturia region is very difficult for anyone to conquer. As he was about to conquer this area of Spain, he receives a letter from the east. He receives a letter from the capital city of the Muslims at the time, the city of Damascus, from the Khalifa al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik. What does this letter say? What does the Khalifa al-Walid al Abdul Malik want from Musa ibn Nusayr? Khanifillah, he was told, you have to come back, you and Tariq ibn Ziyad, come back to Damascus immediately for consultation. Khanifillah, this letter and the Muslims not able to conquer this small area of Spain led to our destruction and led to our eventually defeat in Spain. Why? Did the Khalifa al Walid ibn Abdul Malik call back Tariq ibn Ziyad and Musa ibn Nusayr to Damascus for consultation? And why was this small area of Spain not ever conquered and became a cancer that grew until we lost the entire Spain? This is what we shall look at in the forthcoming lectures. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.